Welcome, future nurses. If you want to review critical thinking and clinical reasoning, chapter 10 of Cultures and Herbs Fundamentals of Nursing, you're in the right place. So let's get started. So what is critical thinking? Critical thinking is defined as the process of intentional higher level thinking to define a patient's problem, examine the evidence-based practice in caring for the patient, and make choices in the delivery of care. So that's a bit long, so let's make it shorter. Critical thinking is using higher level thinking to define a problem, including evidence-based practice in providing care and deciding on care. Now, what is clinical reasoning? Clinical reasoning is defined as the cognitive process that uses thinking strategies to gather and analyze client information, evaluate the relevance of the information, and decide on possible nursing actions to improve the client's physiological and psychological outcomes. That's pretty long, so let's make it shorter. Clinical reasoning is using cognitive processes to gather and analyze client info, evaluate the relevance, and decide on actions to improve outcomes. So what is the difference between critical thinking and clinical reasoning? Critical thinking relies on evidence-based practice to make decisions about the delivery of care, while clinical reasoning relies on evaluating information gathered to decide on nursing care. We need both in nursing because we need to use evidence-based practice to ensure we are providing the most effective care, and we need clinical reasoning because as a nurse, we are constantly gathering information from our patients and we need to evaluate this information and use it to guide our decisions on care. The purpose of critical thinking is to provide a bridge between information and actions. Nurses use critical thinking by incorporating knowledge from other subjects and fields when dealing with changes in a stressful environment and making important decisions. Critical thinking also requires the nurse to use creativity which is defined as a thinking that results in the development of new ideas and products. This allows nurses to create and implement new and improved solutions for healthcare outcomes. Techniques in critical thinking include critical analysis, Socratic questioning, inductive reasoning, and deductive reasoning. Critical analysis is using a set of questions to differentiate important information and ideas from unimportant information and ideas. Socratic questioning is looking beneath the surface and recognizing and examining assumptions, searching for inconsistencies, examining multiple points of views, and differentiating what one knows from what one believes. Inductive reasoning is when generalizations are formed from a set of facts or observations. So when you think of inductive reasoning, picture an upside down triangle and think of it like a funnel. So when you pour water into a funnel, there's a lot of water at the top. And as you go to the bottom of the funnel, there's either drops of water coming out or just a stream, a small stream of water coming out. So with inductive reasoning, you use many different facts or observations to draw one conclusion. So with deductive reasoning, just picture an arrow, just a plain arrow pointing you in one direction. So you go from one idea to one conclusion. So for example, if you read a patient's chart and it says that they're Jewish, you can conclude that that patient may want their food kosher. Applying critical thinking to the nursing process. So we need to know what the nursing process is. It is a systematic, rational method of planning and providing individualized nursing care. And remember, critical thinking was using higher level thinking to define a patient's problem and plan and decide their care. So you can understand how you would need to apply critical thinking to the nursing process since the nursing process is the planning and providing of nursing care. And there are two techniques you can use to apply critical thinking to the nursing process. They include clinical judgment and problem solving. Clinical judgment is the decision-making process to make sure the right nursing action is implemented at the right time in the client's care. 
Problem solving is identifying the problem that represents an unsteady state in the patient. There are three approaches to problem solving. They include trial and error, intuition, and the research process. So trial and error is actually very dangerous in nursing, but it is often used in the home care setting simply because of a lack of equipment and to just suit the client's lifestyle. Intuition is just relying on the nurse's inner sense. So if you get a gut feeling that something may be wrong with your patient or that your patient is declining, it's important that you listen to that feeling and that you make the appropriate actions. So in that instance, you would want to check your patient's vitals or just check on them more frequently. And this is very important because intuition and using intuition has been proven to be life-saving. Lastly is the research process, which is just a formalized, logical, systematic approach to problem solving. Attitudes that foster critical thinking include independence, fair-mindedness, insight into egocentricity, which is defined as being aware of personal biases when making decisions. So just remember egocentricity is believing that one's own culture is superior to others, which can definitely make you biased. So it's important to be aware of those biases when making decisions. Next is intellectual humility, which is an awareness of the limits of one's own knowledge. So it is important to know what you don't know because just assuming that you know everything can definitely lead to a lot of different problems as far as harming your patient, losing your license. So definitely be aware of what you don't know and seek out help, whether it be using your resources, asking a superior, asking a coworker. So it's just really important to know the limits of your own knowledge. Next is intellectual courage, to challenge status quo and rituals. So it's important as a nurse to be able to challenge the status quo and rituals, especially when something else could benefit your patient. So it may be normal to do a certain procedure with a patient. And if you know that that wouldn't be beneficial towards your patient, it's important to challenge it, to either suggest something else or to just speak up about what may be the status quo and just a normal. Next is having integrity, and in nursing, it's defined as applying the same rigorous standards of proof to your own knowledge and beliefs as you apply to others. Next is perseverance, having confidence, and having curiosity. So one phrase to remember all of these attitudes that foster critical thinking is saying, I am independent, fair-minded, confident, and curious. I persevere and have insight into egocentricity, humility, and integrity. Components of clinical reasoning include cognitive processes, metacognitive processes, setting priorities, developing rationales, learning how to act, clinical reasoning and transition, responding to changes in the client's condition, and using reflection. So cognitive processes are the thinking processes based on knowledge of aspects of client care. Metacognitive processes is using reflective thinking. So you want to reflect on a client's status and use critical thinking skills to determine the most effective plan of care. You want to set priorities, which is just ordering your patients based on the most urgent needs to the least urgent needs. Then you want to develop rationales, which is the why. So you want to be able to justify your plan of care and you need to know why you're doing anything that you're doing in nursing. You need to always know the reason why, because this can help to stop errors. Like it can prevent you from hurting a patient, from doing a procedure or doing something that is unnecessary that could cause harm. So it's important to always develop your rationales and know the reason why you're doing anything that you're doing in nursing. Next is learning how to act. So you need to know how and when to respond based on the most urgent needs. Next is clinical reasoning and transition. Remember that transition means change. So you need to be able to recognize subtle changes in a client's condition over time. And then you need to respond to the changes in the client's condition by changing your priorities, adjusting nursing care, and alerting the primary care provider when appropriate. 
And lastly, you always want to reflect. And that is just identifying nursing actions that worked and those that didn't work. And you always want to reflect so that you can always provide the most effective care for your patient. The last topic in chapter 10 is concept mapping. Concept maps are just used to order information. And as nurses, we can use it to organize our plan of care and to also organize patient health history. The first type of concept map is a hierarchical map. It just orders information from the most important to the least important. The next is a spider map, which resembles a spider. It just shows the interrelatedness of concepts and its attributes. Next is flowchart maps, which are linear diagrams that can be horizontal or vertical, and they show a sequence of events and also the cause and effect between events. And the last type of concept map is a system map. System maps include inputs and outputs and just show the relationship between concepts and its attributes. This is the end of chapter 10. Thank you so, so much for watching. Good luck, future nurses. And like and subscribe if you found this information helpful.